Michael Patterson is here. Today is an exciting day for me. Um, with today's announcement, I am finalizing five uh, important roles in my administration. As many of you know, you have a transition period, and then you work to build the administration. You do searches all over the place to fill out the final roles, and these are five key positions that um, we are working on um, filling. These appointments are the result of careful deliberation in, in a complete picture of my team comprised of the highest caliber of talented energetic and selfless servant leaders. They also buy into the administration's mission, vision, vision and values, which um, I repeat regularly. As we move into the second half of my first year in office, we are accelerating out the curve with increasing momentum toward a vision for a hope-filled Rochester with an exciting future. First, I am proud to announce that I have selected interim chief David Smith to be the permanent chief of the Rochester Police Department. Chief Smith, Chief Smith, now privately I call him Dave, but Chief Smith, um, Dave has committed 30 years to law enforcement. I'm proud to put him in this position to instill those values in every officer in the Rochester Police Department, and he gets our mission, vision, and values. He has lots of experience starting as a patrol officer, spent many time in the Southwest Quadrant, and one of the coolest jobs I think he had, maybe chief is cool, but he also commanded the bicycle unit. And I say that because I need someone that is a believer in not only walking or riding the beat to build relationships in our community. He buys into my belief, our belief, city council's belief in community first public safety. And that is what we must accelerate with these challenges that we are facing, not just in Rochester, but across the country. He's been asked over the years to fill acting positions, and he's been tapped many times to take on more responsibility. And it shows that people have always had a belief in him. As interim chief, he's been giving some, given some tough jobs, some tough tasks in a short period of time, including the protest policy which was just posted on Monday, but was worked on um, the first six months of my administration. The process we went through to name a chief was very deliberate. As many of you know, I'm a very deliberate person. I talked to probably hundreds of people. We heard from lots of residents. We surveyed both internal and external uh, stakeholders. And one of the reasons why I was able to take time was because I knew I had a good interim that was there. And as I was conducting that national search, I was saying, am I going to hear from Dave Smith? Is he going to step in and put his hat in the ring? I was hoping that he was, and he did. And I narrowed that list down to 25 highly qualified individuals to consider for this position. And I looked at all of them. I had people who I trust talk to these individuals. But one of the most important things in a police chief is that you have to have good chemistry with the mayor and the mayor has to believe that you are going to understand that you do not operate on an island. And this administration has talked about tearing down walls to make sure that we have one city working together to meet the mission, vision, and value. So I am glad that Chief Smith threw his hat in the ring. I'm glad he did it. And I am glad that he is going to be a permanent member of this administration. So Dave, thank you for taking the task. Thank you, sir. Because I am big on building teams, I am also, and he, he's not here because he's working on wrapping up loose ends at home before he joins us in Rochester, I'm also happy to announce that also after a comprehensive search and in talking with the chief, I'm excited to name Keith Stiff as Deputy Chief of Community Engagement. Keith is more than a 30-year veteran of law enforcement, recently retired as Chief of Detectives of the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office in New Jersey. And as a detective in Hudson, Keith consistently outperformed national homicides clearance rates of 67% with between 83 and 100%. And because homicide investigations require extensive witness cooperation 
Clearance rates are a key measure of trust building in law enforcement. We must make sure that we continue with our community first policing. This, this position um, in the police department has been vacant for an extremely long time. And you know that I put the community at the center of everything that we do. We're doing it at City Hall. We're also going to do it at the police department. And Keith will be a great addition to that. Keith created the county's first gang task force in New Jersey to address the proliferation of street guns, street gangs, and illegal guns on the, on the streets of New Jersey. I am excited about the new perspectives, relevant experience, and proven track record that Keith will bring to Rochester. And with the work that we are doing on the prevention side, we're sending the message that this work cuts across all departments, not just in the mayor's office with the mayor's office of violence prevention services, but also that community approach is also going to be embraced at the police department. And Keith and, T and, Keith and, and Dave will help us to be able to do that. Also, Ms. Carla Johnson. Ms. Carla. All right, to the right is our new Senior Human Resources Administrator and Manager of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Carla, <laughs> Carla has an extensive history with the city, and then she left the city for a brief stint, and we said, wait a minute, we need you to come back. Carla spent time at the Center for Dispute Settlement for about five years, but we're good at pulling talent. I always tell people in another job I should have been like a, a talent scout because I think I'm good at putting the right teams together. And this role is crucial in ensuring we make good on our continued commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and all those race recommendations we are seeing through. And I am so glad that Carla is on board in this capacity. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is absolutely part of our goals as an administration and is at the center of everything we do. So, Carla, I want to thank you for stepping up and taking on this important role. Carla, thank you. <laughs> William, you know, I never called him William. His mom might have called him William. But we call him Bill. William Bill Boudreau is our new chief technology officer. He has been acting. He has been acting in this role. You know, Bill, Bill told me, I, I'm not taking, I don't want to do this job full time. I don't want to do it. I said, all right, just, just keep acting, keep acting. But now we got him to say yes. And I want to thank him for joining us as the chief technology officer. He has over 20 years of experience in this field. And in addition to his, um, Work here at the city, his professional experience includes working for the University of Rochester Medical Center, United Technologies, Com United Technologies Corporation, and Ultralife Batteries. So I am so happy that we have Bill here. Technology is at the center of everything that we do. And we need to make sure that we have great leadership there. So I want to thank Bill for taking on the task. I'm also happy to announce fellow Wildcat and Wilson High grad, Harriet Fisher, has been a project business analyst with the City of Rochester since 1998. She has a distinguished record of selecting and implementing new automated systems to modernize city functions. That includes work in the RPD's office, city clerk's office, Department of Environmental Services. All these things require technology, and Harriet has been on the front line of doing these things. Harriet will be our um, new, new director of project management. And in this new role, she will be managing crucial projects, including the city's mainframe transition, as well as our lands, land management system updates to help us fully realize our vision for the 2034 comprehensive plan. She will provide leadership and guidance that these mission critical efforts require. And I want to thank all these strong leaders for raising their hands, sometimes I had to raise their hands for them, and agreeing to serve our city. As they join the rest of my senior leadership team, I know we have the very best talent to help us build a hope-filled Rochester with an exciting future. Being a mayor, I will tell you, is sometimes a lonely 
job. You talk to any mayor across the country, and this is the toughest time to be a mayor, I believe, in probably the last 100 years. But it's a lonely job. But the job is made better, is made easier when you have committed, strong, dedicated partners that put the city at everything, at everything that they do, that they put the center, the city at the center of everything that they do, and that they have a heart for a job and the passion for the community. So I want to thank my partners on city council who helped make that job easier most of the time. And I want to thank these folks for stepping up, because that is how you are able to do the best on behalf of residents. You have to put together a big, a good team. It's not we. It's we, not me. And none of these people can do this without the broader community. So we will continue to call on the community to help us do that. So with that, I will take um, two or three questions. Like I said, if you want to talk to any of the, can uh, any of the candidates, um, you can do that off camera. Um, who, uh, who's first? I, I, Wendy's got to have a question. So let's start with Wendy. Well, um, first off, I take, I take issue with the question because you were saying that by us picking uh, the, the, chief, the, the interim chief, now chief, as, 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 I, I don't know if your question means that he wasn't qualified. Um, we, we did a national search because I wanted to do a national search to make sure I found the best person. And I believe that we found the best person, and he's standing to my right, and that's Dave Smith. Next question. I think that it will now bring certainty. You have to have certainty within, within an organization. So now as we, um, when you have an interim, sometimes it's harder to build out your command staff. It's harder to recruit people. But now that we know that we have certainty here, we know that we will be able to continue the work that we started. Um, we will c continue to accelerate the pace of things that we, are, that we are doing. And we can continue some of the innovative approaches that we've taken. Look, I want people to understand that we have taken just two days ago, three or four guns were, were taken off the street. And one of the reasons why we're doing this is because of the collaboration that we are having with all of our law enforcement partners. And Dave, uh, Chief Smith, has been at the center of helping to do those collaborative processes. But I want people to understand that it is just not the police department that will help turn our public safety challenges around. It is all of us working in collaboration to, that will do that. The preventative efforts as well as the, as well as the intervention and suppression efforts. As I've said, uh, Berkeley, and you know this, it's about prevention, it's about intervention, and it's about suppression. And, and that is what um, we will continue to do as an administration. Um, we have our work cut out for us. You need only turn on the news and see what's going on nationally. We have more people carrying guns than you talk to any law, former law enforcement officer or current, current law enforcement officer than we've seen in history, period, period. For every gun that we take off the street, we find two or three more. It's a major problem, not just in Rochester, but in every city across our country. And that, and that has to be a big focus on, on, on what we do here. But also the preventative efforts and coordinating that is also extremely important. Because if you look at almost all of the homicides or shootings or things that we had, almost all of them have been disputes, domestic, disputes related to Facebook, disputes related to something that happened at a party, disputes that related to something that happened on the streets. These are, these are all the things that we, are, that we are seeing as it relates to a lot of the issues that we're facing with public safety. And there's lots of books that will be written about this. Is it the pandemic? Is it these other things? But I want people to understand that this requires a whole of community approach. And it, and it just doesn't require the mayor and the police department. It requires all the people that are standing here and all the people that are around this room and the people that are outside of these walls. There are no magic wands. So by me appointing the police chief today 
or, a, or, or the manager of diversity, equity, and inclusion, there is not a magic wand that is going to be pulled out and all of a sudden everything's going to be turned around overnight. So I want to be clear on that. So there's only one man I know that walked on water, and he died thousands of years ago. And none of us standing up here have all of the answers or have magic wands in our briefcases where we're going to turn around things overnight. But what we will do is work relentlessly, talk about the challenges that we have, like gun violence, put it out at the forefront, and put forth plans to make sure that, which, that, that we're going to turn things around. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to recalibrate and try to fix it. I'm going to take one more question, then you can talk to folks off camera. One second. Let's go to you, and then I'll go to you. I'll take three more. I'll go to you, you, and then you'll get the last word, Gino. Yes. Well, I probably talk to Chief Smith probably six times a day. Um, my kids know his name. Um, you know, I think how that manifests itself is communication, open communication, dialogue, but also give and take on, on, on trying new strategies that will work. And if something's not working, okay, let's try something else. But collaborating with partners beyond City Hall, those are absolutely critical elements. Um, that, you, that, that a mayor has to have in his, in, in his police chief. All right, Emil. Um, it's, a, it's a great question. I think that um, you want someone that knows the city, but at the same time was not involved in um, previous challenges that we had, someone that could help turn the page, but also someone, if I said, let's go walk on Garson Avenue, they wouldn't have to get out a GPS to figure out where it was. Um, so you want to be able to strike a balance, and um, that's important. The other thing that's important is, is that you also want someone who also has a good relationship with, with city council. And, and I will tell you um, that I consult a lot with city council. Um, it's important to me because not only are the, the, the chief does report directly to the mayor, but they also have to be able to work with other entities. And that means the judicial branch and the legislative branch. And I heard from both of those branches um, in terms of their belief in chief. Now, the ultimate decision is mine, um, but those things were, are, are absolutely critical when you're picking anybody to lead your team. Because it's, it, these are things that you go through not just with the chief. The chief's important. It's an important role. But the other roles up here are, are equally, um, equally as important. All right, last question, Gino. Oh, it absolutely, uh, um, his, his job was almost all community engagement. Um, community engagement working to, to, to solve homicides in particular and to get in front of gangs, drugs, all the bad stuff that we hear um, about uh, and th that we hear about, see, and, and, our, and is regularly in our community. So it is absolutely critical. Police community relations will be and is one of my number one priorities. You can't, sol you can't solve a homicide. You can't solve a shooting without the cooperation of the community. Homicides are a little easier because you got a victim, they're dead. But shootings and other things, you have to have the prevention side, and that's what our Pathways to Peace, Office of Neighborhood Safety, they play that role. But you also need to have that also within the police department. How do you help bridge that gap? And that's, and that, and that's what Keith's role, um, role will be. Um, his resume, his experience is absolutely extensive. FBI, school graduated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I want to thank you all for coming here today. I want to thank my team again for um, raising um, your hands.